Hi Art Seekers, we're here today with a really exciting special guest with Mar. Thank you so much for chatting with us. How did you come up with your name Mar? Um, I grew up getting yelled at in Spanish, so to me Mar is the sea in Spanish, so getting, growing up surfing and getting yelled at in Spanish made it so that picking a name for street art graffiti purposes was something that was easy. When you go by this means, Mar, I think that's really interesting because if you flip the M and then this means war, then you have this political right. message that you might not have gotten if you just went by Mar. Well, that's the weird thing is in the beginning it was just that I made this sticker and then there's a font that was used throughout World War II that it's like the propaganda font, essentially. And we, when we read, we don't read by sounding things out. We read by recognition. So we look at a word and our brain just takes its best guess at what it thinks it's supposed to be. It doesn't look and go W-A-R, war. Mm -hmm. So you see a font and you see a word written, you automatically go to this version of it you think it is. And that's what happens with that font is this means war. It looks exactly like this means mar. It's a really... I thought cool subliminal way to kind of take a back shot at the fact that like we're all programmed and we don't realize it. Do you see your work itself as being political? Um, in the beginning, since I have the political science background, I think of everything in a somewhat geopolitical way. So a lot of my work in a backhanded way is political. It's not going to like hit you over the head and say, hey, look. I don't believe this, or you should believe this, or this is wrong, and this is right. It's more of like, oh, that's cool, that feels nice, and if I explain it to you, the depth of it, it instantly becomes something where... I think that sometimes, in order to show that something is flawed, we can't continue to participate hoping we're going to change it. We have to opt out and really let people realize that this is a like flawed system and that doing the same thing over and over again and hoping for a new outcome is literally just us being insane, so maybe we should try a new uh, way of life, and that's kind of what this whole thing became, was like, I want to do something significant and say something significant. Well, it seems like you really tackle cultural issues, though, and um, in stereotypes of women when you use images from, cult from advertising culture, is that intentional or are you trying to make um, us examine certain ways that I you just, see the world? I think that Instagram especially has made it's it's like over sexified this whole entire world that we live in even further and it's made it so that like women on the daily put themselves into this little glass box that men have created for them and that glass box is you need to look pretty, you need to be sexy, you need to do all these things. And daily, you can see on Instagram, girls just conforming to this idea of what they think the world wants, which is realistically what men want to see. And it's just made it so that there's this whole entire generation of people pandering to each other for attention based solely upon what it is they look like. And so at the end of the day, the women I use are ones that are the most famous or that are the most pretty because that's what society wants, but they don't want to see them put in a way that makes them look not pretty. I, that's why I ran away from imagery, just because I didn't want to have to deal with people's agendas and people's... I didn't want to deal with people, period, essentially. It was like, let's move you from the equation. It's like, we're the weakest link here. We're not... We're not this like wonderful thing that we all need to pat each other on the back for. And kind of like Mondrian, it seems like your work is more pure than that. It's on a different kind of plane when it's just about the simplicity and sophistication of the design. It's about the feelings and like composition and stuff as opposed to making you an image that you can pick out and understand. It's more about like, oh, that canvas gives me this feeling of this and that and makes me want to do or say this, or it makes me, you know, if whatever memories it brings up or whatever thoughts it makes pop out of your head right then and there, that's part of the dialogue I'm trying to have with you as opposed to like, oh, that is a Banksy piece on global warming and you know exactly what he means and you get the, you know, the point and he's probably right and it's probably really witty and done in a place where global warming is affecting someone. And 
you understand it. Everything that he wanted to get across to you is done in a great, concise way. Well, mine's kind of like, I'm going to give you some of it, you're going to give me some back, and then it's going to give you a little bit back, and then together you'll kind of figure out what this painting is to you and to me, not just what it is to everyone. Because I think that's kind of a weird thing to say, art is universal. It seems like your color choice also means something. Do that's you have generally a... the biggest deal is colors to me. Is one color representative of, of a particular emotion, or is it um, different for every piece? Generally, it's like red will always be the stuff in your life that drives you, that's important, that you want to have, that makes you happy. Like, this, the shapes are, it's like compartmentalizing your life. And all the, the different colors represent different memories that you may have. And then there's the red one that's the one you're trying to recapture because that's the one that meant the most to you. Gray to me was always the city. And for 14 different colors of paint they used to buff graffiti. That's where my like, that's where the, my more concise street art started was with all the colors of buff paint. Because they couldn't pick one gray or whatever. There's unintentional art created by the guys who paint 15 different colors. And so I did women in grays and then stuck them in there so you could barely see them as a critique to the city being like, here's something beautiful mixed in this horribly ugly mess that you made. Beauty can be anywhere. And that was kind of what it was. It's just to continue to try and find beauty everywhere you go.